In this video, we're going to compare Assateague State Park with Assateague National Park. And we're going to tell you which one we like better. Sharon. And we are Cargo On. Cargo Conversion Building Camp. If you want to see some really cool cargo camper conversions, hear from the builders, see some tours, and see some places we camped and some crazy adventures, then you are definitely on the right channel. We have been to Assateague National Park and the State Park, and I thought it would be a good idea to kind of compare the two parks. So the first we went to the National Park. The first time we went was in July and the following year in September we went to the State Park. What are your thoughts on the difference between the two parks? Uh, first off let's talk about location. The two parks are really adjacent to one another so there's not a tremendous difference in terms of what you're going to see in the surrounding area outside the park or in terms of your enjoyment of the landscape of the scenery. It's it's all pretty much the same. And there's not that much difference in even in the way the parks are, are laid out. Now in terms of the amenities, we like the state park due to the fact that it had bathhouses with hot showers and the bathhouses were in decent shape. State Park had these loops that gave you a little bit more of a sense of privacy you didn't feel like you were jammed together. Now, from the National Park standpoint, in their defense, we did a totally different type of camping in the National Park. We chose to tent camp in the middle of the dunes, and as a result, we couldn't even have our vehicle right at our campsite. We had to haul all of our gear in several hundred feet on a very hot day and we're in a campsite that is nothing but sand and a few mounds with vegetation on them. It was way more rustic where we were in the national park. We were, we were beach camping. So they did have uh, recreational vehicle campsites in, in loops in the national park. That was the worst part, I think, with the bathrooms. They, what were they? Like, kind of like Porta Johns or the shower was only cold. Right. There was no hot water. You didn't have a bathhouse per se. You had these latrines, which were a pit latrine. The only they were kind of like outdoor showers yeah, that were it's like private. Yeah, like a could... type outdoor shower that you would. You weren't even in a room that had a full wall. They were just yeah. these barrier partitions that you know you could you could look underneath of them and see whether they were occupied or not because you could see people's legs in there. Personally, I liked the state better because of, you know, we were right next to the bathhouse. The bathhouse was very nice. Plus, I think we saw more horses in the state park. Our, our campsite in the state park was more what you would expect to find in a conventional campground in that you had a asphalt slab for your vehicle and your trailer or recreational vehicle to be parked on. And then you had a picnic table and a fire ring as well. The physical size of the campsites were pretty decent. So you weren't 10 feet away from 
the, the next campers to you. And it seems that the, a lot of the parks, I think the staff are trained that in periods of low occupancy, they don't just pile you all on top of one another. They spread you out as, as much as they possibly can. With acetate, you need to book way in advance to be able to get a spot, especially on the weekend. However, I think what happens is sometimes people don't show up. In your state parks, and even some of the national parks, the peak season runs from the 4th of July through Labor Day. So the, you can pretty much expect that there will not be anything that it hasn't been reserved months in advance during the, that time period. Right. Now, you may be able to go that day and find if someone if, if someone didn't show up or you know, canceled. But outside of the 4th of July to Labor Day, there are certain state parks that you can go there, particularly during the week, and you'll find that the occupancy is 50% or less, and even the weekends, you'll be able to walk in without a reservation and you're seeing it aside. So the state park I would do again in a heartbeat, I wouldn't really recommend going in July. It was so hot and so buggy. We went in September and it was, everything was perfect. It was just a perfect trip. I think it made up for the July trip because it was like 100 degrees when we were there. We're in this mindset that the peak vacation time is between the 4th of July and Labor Day. Everybody wants off and generally the month of August is the heaviest. What we don't realize is if you're looking at a trip to the shore and you're looking to be in the surf, in the, in the water, that the water temperatures of the ocean can often be warmer in the in first September. two weeks of September than what they are in the, the month of August. And every time we go somewhere in July, it's hot as hell and it's buggy. Right. It, that is the buggy season. So. But, you know, I, I'm getting older now and I must admit that I revel in bugs less than I used to when I was younger. But it's kind of to be taken for granted, and you just assume that if you're going to, you got two choices. You either go out and put up with some bugs, or you stay the hell home. Yeah. So that's your choice. So that's it, guys. That's comparing Assateague National Park and Assateague State Park. I try to put links to both of those in the comments. That's a wrap, everyone. You know what to do if you like this video. Y'all come back now, you hear?